Hello, you beautiful people. Today, I'm going to show you how to cover a giraffe with Color Art's amazing moon rocks. Now, I had originally done a pig for the contest that Color Art did a while back, but I never had a chance to make a video. And so when I made another pig, I lost the footage. So I decided to try a giraffe and show you guys how to cover a giraffe. Hopefully third time is a charm. What I'm doing first is coloring the moon rocks with alcohol ink. Moon rocks are just humongous mica flakes and I am absolutely in love and obsessed with these things. They are so much fun to play with if you haven't used them yet. You should really try it. They are available at colorart.com. Um, there are 12 assorted colors available and sometimes you need a color that isn't in the color line that's offered. So that's why I'm coloring my own moon rocks now. Um, I needed black for the hooves of the giraffe and black isn't available. So I just dribbled some blending solution over the moon rocks and then added a couple drops of alcohol ink in the center of the moon rocks. Now I'm taking a little dauber tool and spreading the alcohol inks around on the mica flakes. If you don't have a dauber tool, that's totally fine. You can use your fingers. I just happened to have this lane right next to my crafting area, so I grabbed it and ran with it. But the good thing about coloring your own mica flakes is that you can determine how saturated the color is. So I didn't want these to be too, too black, so I made them black enough. And as you can see, I'm setting them aside to dry for a few minutes. It really doesn't take long for the alcohol ink to dry on these mica flakes. It dries really quickly. Now, if you don't want to use alcohol ink, you can also use acrylic paint to color these. But I wanted the same shimmer to show through on these mica flakes that shows through on the rest of the giraffe. Because on the giraffe, I do use some of the colors that are available. I didn't color my own except for the hooves. So I wanted the the shimmer of mica flakes to show through. And so I didn't I didn't want to cover that up too much with the acrylic paint if that makes sense. So here I'm using my heat gun because I'm impatient and just wanted to give these a little once over to make sure that they were dry. And it really does not take very long. As you can see they're pretty much dry now, but I'm just going over them to make sure. And what you're left with are these beautifully shimmery, humongous mica flakes that you can use in so many different projects. They turned out beautifully, they're already dry and they're ready to be used in my project. So, next we're going to talk about splitting mica flakes. When you receive your bag of moon rocks, many of the mica flakes come stuck together in a little pile, as you can see right there. So you need to split those apart. And what I do is I take my X-Acto knife and I just slide them down the individual flakes and they peel right apart. It's not a difficult process at all. I've also used a T-pin to separate the mica flakes because that seems to work really well. And I've heard that others use a paring knife, which apparently works well too. The paring knives that I have are all too thick, they're too wide, um, so they don't work as well as my X-Acto knife does for this process. But you just pick up the little pile of mica flakes and run your X-Acto knife or your T-pin or your paring knife down th through the, the individual flakes and they will slide right apart and they're ready to be used in your project. Very, very simple to use. The flakes that I'm splitting here are the flakes that I actually used in my giraffe. Like I said before, they come in 12 amazing colors. And the colors that I used for the giraffe are Pirate's Booty, 
which is the flake that I'm splitting right here, and driftwood, which is a brownish flake. Now, the Pirate's Booty came in several different shades of gold, so I was able to use that mostly to get the spots on my giraffe. I think I only added just a couple of the driftwood flakes. I really didn't need to add many. But you can see how easily they fall apart when you slide the knife between them. Just be careful and go slow. Yay! So we have our moon rocks split and now it's time to move on to our project. There are a couple of ways to apply the flakes to the, the paper mache form. Um, the first way that I am going to show you is just by applying glue to the paper mache form, finding a moon rock or a mica flake that is about the size to cover the space that you need, and then gluing it down. You do need to hold the mica flake for several a good several seconds in order to get the mica flake to adhere to the glue otherwise it just pops right back up especially when you're covering a curved surface that's when it's really important to hold the mica flake down so i didn't speed this portion up only because i wanted you to see how long you need to hold each mica flake down to get an idea of how long it takes for the mica flakes to really set into the super glue. Another way to do it that I really like is just to apply the glue to the mica flake and set it down that way rather than applying the glue to the paper mache form. But it's extremely helpful when you do this to have an X-Acto knife available to reach into those spaces that you really can't fit your fingers. You know, it's really hard to get my fingers in up underneath the giraffe's underside in order to manipulate the flakes. So I found myself using my X-Acto knife to help me place flakes a lot, and it was extremely helpful. So whether you apply the glue to the flake and then to the paper mache, or you apply the glue to the paper mache and then apply the flake, you'll want to have an X-Acto knife available to help you kind of hold the, the pieces down. Plus, it helps you to keep a lot of the super glue from sticking to your fingers. And you can see that's exactly what happens to me here in just a minute. I found this brush on super glue after I was almost completely done covering the giraffe. As you can see, I've done the giraffe and I've done three of his hooves. I'm on the last one and I found this brush on super glue that works so well. So if you're going to try this project, if you're going out to buy super glue, I would definitely recommend getting the brush on super glue because it is so easy to use. And it's again the same process. I just applied super glue to the paper mache form and then held the flake down until it was dry. And you can tell that I'm holding these flakes down for a good, I don't know, probably 10 seconds. And because it's a curved surface, it's hard to make sure that the flake gets completely covered and curved to the surface. So I apply it to each end and hold it that way so that it, it forms to the surface. And you can see here where my finger got into the glue, oopsie, and a little bit of the, the flake stuck to my finger. It's no big deal. It wears off within, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. It's really not a big deal. But it brings me back to wanting to tell you that when you apply color to the flakes, it they are color fast. So the color does not come off on your fingers um, and it also doesn't come off on the 12 colors that Color Art has available, which is really nice. Now here we have a problem. I'm a little perplexed and confused because I lost the, vid the video footage for the giraffe. So I had to redo 
applying the resin to demonstrate that for you because I, it disappeared and I couldn't ever get it back. So here I am. I've mixed my resin up per the directions. I let it sit for about 10 minutes so that it off gases, meaning that all the bubbles came to the surface and it was much less bubbly and had much less air trapped in it than it did before. And I just take a cheap disposable paintbrush and I dip it in my resin and then I paint it on the giraffe. And I just do that all over the giraffe until he's fully covered. And that really protects your flakes so that nothing is going to come off. The color isn't going to come off. It, it really just secures everything together. Plus it gives it a nice glossy coat. And it when you glue the mica flakes to a curved surface, you're always going to have a little bit of the flakes that that just won't lay perfectly flat to the surface just due to the nature of mica flakes having layers in them and you can see I just went over a piece on the hoof that's like that so if you apply the resin it really helps to keep those protected and they're not going to come off once the resin is cured it it provides enough strength that they really are stuck to the giraffe or whatever form you're using and they won't come off. You have no concern about them breaking or falling off, but you do if you don't cover it with resin. And actually the resin coating really doesn't take very long. It's just dabbing on some resin all over the giraffe, making sure that if you have some layers of flakes that you get it in between the layers just to provide a little more strength and stability like I'm doing right there and that's really all you have to worry about it only takes a few minutes and when you're done covering it in resin then you want to take your torch and quickly torch the fresh resin so that you can get rid of any more air bubbles that are in there you don't want your newly crafted giraffe to have air bubbles and that's really it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you try it out. Thanks.